been at training and and I'd come home and all of a sudden, you know, my four-year-old son was, was having seizures on the floor. There were times where in the middle of the night I'd be rushing to the hospital, you know, I just forgot about football and I remember saying to my wife, I'm not sure I can do this anymore. playing for a team called Luton and uh, we were playing against Barnet, uh, another local team and the ref was was the scout and he came up to me and my dad after the game and, and told me I want you to come and, and have a trial so they arranged a game for Luton v Arsenal and and it went from there you know and they said to me straight away after listen we want to sign you I was only nine then seven years later I found myself making my debut you know, in, in Arsenal's first team, which which has pressures, but for me, the pressure didn't come from my family or the fans. The fans were always good to me, or the media. It was more trying to prove yourself to your teammates. You know, I was playing in a team with international superstars, you know, Fabregas, Van Persie, William Gallas, you know, big players who've been at the top of their game for a number of years, and then all of a sudden, uh, 16 year old is, is thrown into the deep end and it's down to you to survive at that level and, and try and thrive and I think that's the difference where some youngsters get mixed up you know some want to just survive and some want to take it to the next level and I wanted to take it to the next level I was impatient I wanted to play no I want you to eat your oh. dinner first because okay. Alright, get some socks and a jumper. Do, do, do. What size are you? I'm size two. Don't you dare drop my sister. My mum and dad were, were never really the pushy type, you know, they never put pressure on me. They never pushed me into a situation. Everything I'd done was because I wanted to do it football wise, you know, school wise. Of course, they'd send me to school and, and, and make sure I was going, but. There was never pressure on me to to do anything I didn't want to do, and that's that's what I learned from my parents, and that's the way I try and be for for my kids. I try and teach my kids manners, teach them right from wrong, do good things. But when they get older and and they want to do something with their life, you have to back them because they're their own people. You know, they want to. You want them to be successful in what they want to do, rather than push them into something they don't want to do. Arch, no, no, Archie. Archie. No. No, no, your feet are going to get wet. They won't. Step on that side and hold my hand. Huh? Good boy. No, I can't climb up, mate. Oh, Shoot! Hit the crossbar. Hey! That's yours. That's a save. We are going to my academy, which is which I've just recently opened. Um, it's for kids between the ages of 10 and 18. So at the moment we have, I think around 100 kids. The idea is that they get elite coaching and they also get a chance to represent uh, England um, in the Goffier Cup, which is a, one of the biggest tournaments it's in Sweden. And it's an opportunity for them because every scout in the world is going around. I'm the game. <laughs> hey, mate. You all right? Right, yeah? Look at the size of these two, man. What's it like up there? Small, isn't it? How long do you need to keep on? 10, 15 minutes. All right, lads. <laughs> How are we? Good. How's half time? Good, good. Nice. Left foot. Brilliant. Yes, mate. Nice. Jump. Good boy. Yes, Ollie. Fuck him. He's yours. He's yours, Tristan. Sunny. Oh, good ball. Good ball, Tyler. Hold that, Orange. Hold that, Max. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. 
go. Okay, one, two, squeeze, good. Squeeze, one, two, good. Squeeze, five, good. Hey. Six, good, come on. Seven, good. Eight, good, up, 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 up. Nine, good, up, 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 up. Ten, bang. You know, I've had different types of injuries and types of injuries that affected me different, differently mentally. You know, I always, always think about one injury and you know, it always plays on my head. It was in 2016, maybe 2015, and uh, yeah, I picked up an injury in training and it was tough to take because I was making my way back to where I wanted to be and it and I'd come home and all of a sudden, you know, my four year old son was was having seizures on the floor. I went off and then it happened time and time and time again every day for maybe three or four months and there were times where in the middle of the night I'd be rushing to the hospital. You know, me and my wife would, would probably sit up most nights because most of the time it was happening, the seizures at night. So we put him to bed, but we couldn't sleep because, you know, we didn't know what was happening with him. So we'd just sit up, you know, I just forgot about football. And I remember saying to my wife, I'm not sure I can do this anymore. Andrew? You all right? Come on. Come on, man. Come on, you all right? It makes you realise that football is not everything. You know what we're like as men. We don't like to show weaknesses. We don't like to to talk about things. But a few people knew, and that's why I speak so highly of um, of Arsene Wenger as well because he was brilliant. You know, he said to me, "Listen, you deal with with your son. You take out um, however long it takes." You know, and and this is this is why this injury took so long. And, and people don't realise that. You know, they think. Okay, you get injured, and oh, he, they say he's he's used, he, he's always injured. He get, he's injury prone. He, you know, he's never going to be fit. But they don't realise what goes on behind behind closed doors, you know. And for the first four or five months of that rehab, you know, I didn't want to be rehabbing. I was in and out of hospitals. I wasn't sleeping with with my son, and you know, I didn't really care to be honest with you, because. My main focus was him, and you know, I sort of switched off from from the outside world a little bit. But it just it makes you change the way you think about things and and life because anything can happen. And yeah, I'm a footballer, and it's great. But if, you know, family comes first always. You know, that's why I, I, I try and be the best dad I can be. I try and spend as much time as I can with my kids. You know, it sounds like a cliche and everyone says, oh, everything you do is for your kids, but literally everything you do when you have kids, you'll realise is, is for them. Just try and pass it. Yeah. Look at your head up and do it quick, OK? But well played. And thankfully now my son is good. He's, uh, thanks to the, the doctors and the specialists, he, he's, uh, he's under control now. He's been asking me all the time, Dad, when are you back, when are you back? So, yeah, I want to come back for him, but not for him as well. My daughter, she loves it. And my, you know, my new baby hasn't even seen me play football yet, so I have to do it for her as well. Oh, that ain't fair. Oh! Jesus Christ. What you had for breakfast? And again. That cut is the best. Make sure that that's heard loud and clear, mate. Cut is by far the best. Lilu. You should never give up. play for as long as possible. 
I do genuinely love football. It's my life, it's my kids' life, it's my family's life. We're a football family. My goal is to get back in the team and win as many games as possible. And at the moment, that is all I'm focused on.